Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and this is the 24th and last episode in my bookish favourites advent calendar series. And before we dive into the book that I want to discuss today, I just have to say that I've really enjoyed doing these daily videos. It's been a lot of work. It's actually been a lot more work than I had expected. But I really enjoyed looking back at some of my absolute favourite books, some of which I bang on about every single video and some of which I don't really talk about. So thank you so much for being there with me on these uh, on this journey through my reading life and I want to finish it today with what I routinely consider my favorite classic and which might even might even make it to be my favorite book of all times and that is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This book is so so special to me. Weirdly I don't remember when I first read it. I don't even remember if I first read this in German or if I went straight to English, but I do remember reading Oscar Wilde as a teenager with a dictionary by my side, looking up pretty much every second word because his language is so complex for someone who speaks it as a second language and his style is so beautiful and you have to read every sentence three times before you understand it. But something about that gave me a real sense of satisfaction as a teenager when I read his books. The picture of Dorian Gray just keeps on giving, whether you read it for the first time or the tenth time, there's always something more to discover that is largely due to the beautiful, beautiful prose. You could read this book and not take any of the plot in and not understand any of the characters or know what's going on at all and you would still get something out of the beautiful language of this book. But I am getting ahead of myself. Let me start by um, giving you a bit of background about The Picture of Dorian Gray if you haven't heard of it. This was published in 1890 and it is Oscar Wilde's only novel. And in a way that's kind of a good thing because objectively Oh, I'm gonna get so much hate on this. Objectively, it's not that good. Especially when you compare it with some of his more brilliant works like his plays and his short stories and his fairy tales, which I think are really the heart of his opus. Uh, the novel didn't really suit his style, I think, because as a form it is just a bit too long and doesn't lend itself to punchy, beautifully crafted sentences. But he certainly did try and it is still an amazing novel. I mean, look, I've just said it's my favourite novel, so of course I'm going to defend this novel. But the point still stands, if you're new to Oscar Wilde, I probably wouldn't recommend starting with this one. So, published in 1890, this caused a little bit of a scandal. Uh, the scandal was around the perceived immorality and depravity of the picture of Dorian Gray. And in fact, in subsequent editions, um, the book has always been printed with a preface. You can see it right here. I have taken plenty of notes in this. And the preface, in a way, is a defense of the book. Not a defense of its quality, but a defense of its validity as a novel in the literary world. I think my favourite sentence of this preface is the line, books are well written or badly written, that is all. And that's my favourite line because I don't 100% agree with it. I think there is more to books than pure quality, especially since quality is an entirely subjective measure. And I do realise that I'm contradicting myself here because just a few minutes ago I said that objectively this is not a very good book. But what I mean by quality being a subjective measure is that the collective decision of whether a book is good or not is heavily influenced by the lived experience of the people who make that decision. So if a literary critic of Oscar Wilde's time said this is a bad novel because of its immorality and depravity, then that is very heavily influenced by this art critic's lived experience as likely a Victorian man with a certain sense of morality and of what is good and what is bad. Honestly, I don't know where I'm going with this. Do I agree with Oscar Wilde or do I not agree with Oscar Wilde? I don't know. Hello, I'm not a professional literature person. This book makes you think. That is evident from the preface. 
but it's even more evident from the rest of the story. But the preface is just a beautiful kind of microcosm of what the book is actually about. Oh wow, I'm eight minutes into the recording of this video and I still haven't talked about the plot. Right, The Picture of Dorian Gray is about a beautiful young man named, you guessed it, Dorian Gray, who lives a life of leisure. He's admired by his two friends. Uh, one is the painter Basil Hallwood and then the aristocrat Lord Henry. And the three of them sit together at the beginning of the book. Dorian is being a model for Basil who's painting his portrait and Lord Henry is sitting there and watching them. And during that first scene in the book they strike up a conversation about what really is the purpose of life. And Lord Henry convinces Dorian that the purpose of life is to be beautiful and to enjoy beautiful things. And Dorian Gray looks at his portrait and is dismayed because he knows that while he is young and gorgeous and rich now, he will not always be young and gorgeous and rich. So he curses the painting and he expresses the wish that the painting would age in his place and that the painting would show the signs of his sins and of his aging and the Dorian Gray himself would forever remain beautiful. Well, because this is a gothic horror story, he gets his wish. So Dorian Gray goes through his life in the body of a gorgeous 18 year old innocent boy while doing some really rather nasty things. I'm not going to spoil it exactly what he gets up to, but it's not good. And his beautiful face carries him through life and he's admired from all sides. And the people who dare question him are conveniently pushed aside, they leave or they die, and no one ever really catches on to what Dorian is up to in his sinful life. I find it difficult to explain what I love about this book so much. I think it's partly the fact that this is very much a philosophical essay disguised as a novel. The plot of the novel is definitely not what drives it. There isn't really a mystery to it because we know what happens with Dorian in his portrait. There isn't really a sense of character development, which is what I normally really enjoy about fiction. But what this book has is loads and loads of really beautiful sentences, of really intriguing thoughts about the philosophy of aestheticism, of uh, questions of morality. And those questions don't always get answered in the way that you expect them to from a Victorian novel. This book takes ideas and tropes of the gothic horror genre and uses them to express kind of the horror within humanity. It shows us what exactly we are capable of. It shows us the really ugly side of being a person and especially the really ugly side of being a beautiful person. The opening scene itself is an absolute masterpiece and if you get your hands on this novel then and you're not sure whether it's for you then I would definitely recommend reading at least the first chapter. Reading that conversation between the three friends and figuring out from there if The Picture of Dorian Gray is a book for you. Let's talk a little bit about the characters. Um, the book is set around this triangle uh, of Dorian, Basil the painter and Lord Henry the friend and these three people function very much as archetypes, as personified ideas, as personified philosophies. Dorian at the beginning of the book very impressionable, really a blank page ready to be filled with ideas, with dangerous and immoral ideas from Lord Henry. Basil kind of acts as the conscience but at the same time his downfall is his love of beautiful young men like Dorian Gray and um, he is too weak to place his moral boundaries above that admiration of Dorian. Unfortunately one of the really big things that are lacking from me in this book are female characters. There are two characters that kind of play a role in the story. One of them is a young woman uh, called Sybil Vane whom Dorian falls in love with when he sees her on stage because she's a, a stage actress and 
again, she's very much a personified idea. She's not really a person as such. She is this creature of pure innocence and purity and love and that is juxtaposed with her profession as an actress which in Victorian times had a lot of connotations of uh, prostitution, of sex work, of disreputable women. Uh, so she kind of embodies that paradox and she is someone who Dorian Gray can pour his love into and then later his hates and she's very much an object that, show, that shows us the first wrongdoings of Dorian's, of Dorian's character. The other woman that I'm thinking of is Lady Henry, so that's Lord Henry Wotton's wife, but she's again more of a punchline than really a person. So I do wish that Oscar Wilde had spared a second thought, uh, especially to fleshing out Sybil Vane's character, because I think it would have given the book just an extra layer of emotionality if we as the reader uh, had been able to feel more connected to Sybil and to her own personal tragedies, of which there are many. On a much more surface level, this book is a wonderful collection of one-liners, of punchlines, of aphorisms, um, of things you can engrave onto your... I don't know what you actually engrave. Um, basically, I can open this book on any page and there will be a punchy line for me to read out to you likely written in dialogue because that's where Oscar Wilde really truly shines. That's where you can see that his true talent is as a playwright, not a novelist. Let's test this theory. Okay, I've opened the uh, I've opened the novel on page 42 43. Let's have a look. I am too fond of reading books to care to write them, Mr. Erskine. I should like to write a novel, certainly, a novel that would be as lovely as a Persian carpet and as unreal. But there is no literary public in England for anything except newspapers, primers and encyclopedias. Of all people in the world, the English have the least sense of the beauty of literature. Says, of course, Lord Henry Wotton. The book has a very Oscar Wilde type humour about it, so if you enjoy Wilde's uh, comedies, then you will find the same kind of humour in the picture of Dorian Gray, except mixed in with a really dark and dreary and dreadful story. I find that combination quite attractive, personally. Right, I think I have gushed about this book a lot. My video is now running to 21 minutes. Funny that I managed to talk about all of the other novels in this, uh, in this series in around five or six minutes at the most, but it's a truly beautiful book. I love it so much. Despite its shortcomings, and there are many, I just can't help loving this a little bit more every time I read it. Let me know if you feel the same. There won't be a video tomorrow because this is the last in this series, but I will see you again in a few days. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.